So uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm Dan Thomas. I'm the communications director and the spokesman for the president of the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, thank you for, uh, for attending this uh, media stakeout following today's informal hearing of the uh, General Assembly. Please allow me to introduce Irina Bakova, the Director General of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. Ms. Bakova has been nominated by her country, Bulgaria, as a candidate for the position of the next Secretary General of the United Nations. Ma'am, the floor is yours. I don't know what to say. Um, you have to guide me. Uh, let me just uh, say that um, I was uh, um, within these um, dialogues uh, that uh, the President of the General Assembly organized. Uh, I personally think it's a very good way of uh, opening uh, the process of the selection of the next uh, Secretary General. Uh, it gives uh, a lot of opportunity for us candidates uh, to share uh, some of the ideas because it's a vast array of questions. If you have followed, uh, uh, initially I thought two hours is long and now I see it's not long. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, we just touched, uh, I would say, the, uh, on the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg of so many issues. But still, it was a, a good exchange. I, uh, what I could share uh, with the, uh, I would not repeat what I have said, but uh, what I think gives me uh, the uh, audacity to uh, be a candidate, uh, of course, very honored by the decision of uh, my government, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, because I do believe that United Nations, as I said, are indispensable. I'm a huge believer in multilateralism, in diplomacy, in dialogue, in uh, solving uh, problems, in prevention, uh, in uh, social inclusion, uh, in uh, uh, respecting uh, dignity of every single uh, uh, woman and man uh, on the planet. And on the other side, I think the United Nations are also indispensable when it comes to challenges. I'm talking about the climate change. Uh, uh, I'm talking uh, about uh, all the topic of living together, of the rise of violent extremism, of uh, intolerance, uh, and uh, uh, having this experience already seven years with my organization. And before that, uh, working for the transition of my country, uh, Bulgaria, uh, uh, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, of joining the European Union and becoming a democratic European state, uh, gave me, as I said once again, the strength to think I know what transition is, I know how to respect certain values, uh, how to be guided by these values, and I think that uh, I could uh, contribute uh, with the, my knowledge and with my commitment uh, to the future of the United Nations. This takes some questions. If you could uh, give us your name and your media organization. Uh, yes, it's Pamela Falk from CBS News, Madam Executive Director. You answered a lot of questions. But one question that did not come up was about terrorism in Europe and if the UN could play a role in some kind of unified fingerprinting or sharing of intelligence, which has been called for but hasn't been put into effect. Do you think the UN could play a role in this? Well, I think that uh, uh, the UN uh, is playing and could play uh, a bigger role. Uh, the uh, counter-terrorist counter strategy of the Secretary General that he launched uh, in uh, January is a very important uh, starting point uh, uh, of all this. Uh, I think, uh, of course, uh, uh, uniting, creating platforms for all the actors uh, to work uh, closer being in the area of, uh, of intelligence. And otherwise, I can say that uh, we work uh, uh, for the financing of extremism on the illicit trafficking of uh, antiquities. This is the way we work. We create this platform uh, working with the uh, uh, intelligence, uh, uh, also with the uh, judges and others. But what I think is uh, uh, very important, and I insist on that once again, this is the preventive role. This is uh, to go where it all starts. When President Obama convened last September here the summit on preventing violent extremism, and uh, he invited me also uh, to speak during the summit, uh, I do remember vividly the uh, uh, appeals and the uh, ideas of many world leaders uh, who were saying that we should not be, once it happened, we should not be in the end. We have to go before. We have to go on the benches of schools, uh, to the communities, uh, with the families, uh, to work with the uh, leaders, uh, religious, traditional leaders, 
in order to prevent this. I think this is an extremely important role where United Nations has experienced in different circumstances uh, working uh, with the uh, countries, not only Europeans. I would say that we have seen uh, terrorist attacks uh, in Istanbul, uh, in Ouagadougou, in uh, Bamako, uh, in Brussels, in Paris, uh, uh, in Jakarta before that. I think it's a global challenge and we have to look at it also uh, from the, this perspective. Thank you very much. Uh, Ahmed Fati, American Television News. Uh, Madam Director, uh, what's your experience during the past seven years in UNESCO uh, prepares you for the position of the Secretary General, uh, especially with the uh, out scope of the uh, operations that the UN as an whole organization uh, take? Well, I think many, many, uh, many aspects of, of my work these seven years are related um, uh, let me just mention that in the 17 goals of the Sustainable Development Agenda, nine are related to our work at UNESCO. I have been participating uh, uh, in, the, uh, in a very active, proactive manner even, uh, in the formulation engaging with member states uh, to uh, achieve and to adopt the Agenda 2030. On the other side, I think um, uh, UNESCO with its uh, better position, understanding history, of uh, issues like uh, culture and heritage and tolerance and dialogue among cultures. Uh, working with youth uh, is uh, uh, very well positioned also to participate in this UN global effort uh, in order to counter violent extremism or uh, terrorism uh, with its preventive uh, action. We have contributed uh, to the uh, Secretary General's uh, uh, strategy and we are actively engaged uh, in this work. Uh, I would say, on the other side, um, we at UNESCO have the uh, human rights um, uh, pr promotion and respect as a uh, cross-cutting approach of uh, working, uh, uh, working uh, for freedom of expression or for gender, uh, promoting uh, uh, girls' education, uh, social inclusion. Uh, all these are uh, so fundamental, in my view, uh, for the achievement of Agenda 2030 or to tackle some of the situations uh, with the uh, humanitarian crisis. I'm talking, of course, about uh, uh, refugees. Um, we are preparing for the World Humanitarian Summit and we will be launching a platform uh, on uh, uh, education in emergencies. We know we have been um, advocating for a very long time that in protracted crisis, you cannot just speak about humanitarian uh, approach. You have to put the dots together between the humanitarian and the de developmental. And I have been a very strong promoter of, of this idea. And now I think we are coming towards uh, 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 finding the right ways to uh, uh, marry together, to match together to uh, the humanitarian and the developmental uh, aspect. Uh, so I can speak a lot more, but I think the... And on the other side, and with this I will uh, uh, end my, my response to your question, I think the fact that UNESCO was in a financial crisis for the known reasons, we lost in 2011 22% of our budget and we still are uh, in this mode, um, gave me the opportunity to implement uh, very difficult reforms uh, in the organization without losing the leadership and the main, I would say, uh, trust of the organization. This gave me the opportunity to work very closely with staff with these staff associations um, who were very fully on board uh, during this process. And the last two years being chair of the High Level Committee on Management with the Chief Executive Board uh, has enlarged my uh, understanding of what are those reforms that are being implemented now in the organization and what has to be done in the future so that we are fit for purpose, do more with less, and indeed serve the people something that is, I think, our main responsibility. Merci, Madame Bokova, Bouchra Ben Youssef, Moroccan Press. Alors, je voudrais déjà vous poser la question pour savoir comment s'est passé votre grand oral. Et deuxièmement, euh, on aurait bien aimé voir, à côté du jury qui est composé des États membres et de la société civile, des représentants des médias. Et vous savez que les médias se plaignent souvent de, de voir leur accès à l'information, parfois ici même, réduit en peau de chagrin. Quel, en tant que secrétaire général, comment verrez-vous la place des médias ici même Je vous remercie. 
Franchement, je crois que ce sont des questions que vous devez poser à la présidence de l'Assemblée générale. Je crois que euh, ce n'est pas le secrétaire général qui, veut, qui a, a organisé ces, ces débats, ces rencontres. Mais de toute façon, je dirais que sans médias, sans communication, il n'y a rien au monde aujourd'hui. Et je crois que le, euh, les Nations Unies, comme j'ai répondu aussi à cette question, quel type de communication j'envisage euh, je crois que c'est extrêmement important de, euh, si nous avons un message, il faut le communiquer. Euh, si nous avons quelque chose à dire, euh, des, des idées, euh, il faut avoir aussi des partenaires de passer euh, ces messages. Et, et de toute façon, euh, je crois que sans les médias, euh, c'est très difficile euh, de, de le dire. Moi, peut-être je suis euh, très attachée à, à cette question parce que l'UNESCO a le mandat de euh, promouvoir euh, la liberté d'expression et de travailler avec les journalistes. Et nous sommes euh, très liés avec les organisations euh, des journalistes euh, travaillant avec ça. Le reste, sur les modalités, malheureusement, je ne suis pas en mesure de répondre très concrètement à cette question. Merci beaucoup.